Hello everyone, in this video I would like to talk about the family business characteristics and furthermore I want to focus on what is a family business and its definition specifically and also on the three circle model that it has been used to try to explain this what surrounds and what it's built of a family business. There are plenty of tons of academic definitions Therefore, if you're searching here on the internet to further explain or listen to some other opinions of the family business, this definition might be probably a little bit more complex to be built. That's why there are plenty of authors that are trying to explain exactly what it is. I will start just by reading this one that it's a family business is any business in which several family members assume management or active responsibility as owners. But here we are now talking about ownership, so I will go further in detail in next parts of the video. One has a family business if you work with someone from your family in a business belonging to the two or belong to them someday. So in case of the father or mother, that they are the two of them to working together or the father and son, father and daughter, or the mother and daughter, or, or the, even the cousin with the other cousin or an aunt. Now I'm just trying to say like this complexity that they can be different ways of how to describe a family business. And the essence of a family business is that its blood is shared, in the case of the families, and work and ownership as well of the company. So furthermore, this three circle model is the one that it's mainly common taught in this topic of family business because it involves the family, the business and the ownership. But, and I will go in detail, there will be intersections of family that might be owners or just family working in business and not being owners, or in the case of the, that they might be in the three areas. So the family, it is just a group of people, but it's made of the family members, but they don't have any property or they are not participating in the company. Usually these family members, they are working aside. Uh, they don't have to or not are really into the business itself. They are just family. The family in ownership, there could be, if it's a well-structured and organized family business where they already have their set of shares, then there could be also family members that decide not to work, but probably just invest their money so that the, bunny, the business can keep running. We have the only the ownership itself, they are not members of the family itself, but they just have some part of the property of the equity of the business. Now we have also the ownership in the business. And here also we are not talking about family members, that they are not part of that group, but they are only just shareholders, but they are also working to run the company. We have the people that it's only focused in the area of the business, that in this case, they are the employees. Most of the cases that they are just, just working in the business, they can have different type of managements. And here they do not necessarily have the shares of the company or they are not even also part of the family. We have the business and family who are those that do not necessarily have part of the property of the ownership of the business. They don't have stocks, they don't have shares, but they are already working. But usually sometimes we can also see that in family business, family this, that is currently working, sometimes it's expected, especially if, if it's a father and daughter, or father and son, it's somehow expected that in the future, the business will go to the hands in the succession plan, in a proper succession plan for the second generation. And we also have the ownership business and family that are the, they are running the business, they are the owners, 
and they are actually the family. So being in one of these parts of the different three circle model will vary according to the types of of persons that are really working on the business or they are or they are just a side of the business. So having these types of differences between that person that can be either in one set of another makes family business so different from one to another. There is another really structured way to say all the family business are like this or all the families tend to be like this. Of course, there are certain patterns that might be repeated among the family business or what is a family business, but in the essence of the business itself and from the core values of a family, that is what it will transmit the family itself to the to the business. So that could be also one of in, talking into the characteristics and the and the advantages of a family business. Sometimes that as the first generation started and they kept building the business, and as time go on, the business have built this certain part of trust in their communities, regions, or the parts where they operate. So that is a, one of the main advantages that customers tend to see this as a business where they can trust if they already know that it's a good family, that it's really customer oriented, that they are really care or taking care of the business itself and also to having this part of relationship because family business have this special feature, we could say, that in comparison to more already structured business with customers don't have this connection with the family, they don't know the directly the owner, or they don't they don't feel that they can just go to the store and talk directly with the owner. Sometimes family business does give this a certain part of core advantage that traditional or more corporate business, although yes, they can have the management team, but giving it the trust of a, of a certain family, and that could be also a core advantages. And of course, there is the part of that there are corporations that they are still managed by the family or they have certain amount of shares, but the family itself might not be really involved. And it could be surprisingly that there are plenty and hundreds of family business, thousands of family business, and it's around the 90% in each country. And this percentage may vary to different regions, but nearly the 90% of the businesses are mainly family business. That's why it has become a really also important focus to talk about and to further develop so that family business can keep running and being developed over time, since they are also an important factor of any country's economy. And I want to mention briefly one of the frequently asked questions that are that come up from family business. And what are the disadvantages of family businesses and why do families owned businesses fail? And to say about the disadvantages, sometimes having the family business being the management, it could also happen that there could be a lack of proper administration and also a lack of commitment of family members. As the first generation might have grown their own businesses, sometimes second generations are not probably into what's the industry of the business, or they are not really interested of for them developing the business from the first generation that they either work for other businesses, find other jobs, or they start another type of business that the first business might not be fully developed that when it will be time to innovate, there will be, there won't be the energy that it's required to be the fully development of a business as well. Some of the bad practices to say that the family business have is having the non-working family members on the payroll. And 
this is also probably very common bad practice that is done that owners or the family members that are managing the business think and use the cash of the business as if was the cash of the family. And this mix of the cash flow is one of the negative and bad managements that are done in different family business. That's why when probably there's the time to pay for the suppliers or even to to have it inside the payroll to have some non, non-working non family business is one of the bad or the worst practices that family business can do. Because if someone is not really adding value to the businesses, then it's taken out. As simple as that, as well as the cash flow. If you're paying your, or if you're paying some other personal expenses with also the the business cash, then when the business might require some cash, here could be like come the certain problems between using also the cash. Uh, trying to avoid these type of practices is the first step that business owners should start doing so that they can really start having a healthy management in the family business. What it will be better or it's recommended is if the family member is working to have a salary according to an average of what's the market paying for that type of role and to see and seek ways if the person is not really convinced or fully accepts the payment then the business should start looking for new ventures, for new spin-offs, for that the business can keep growing. And then, therefore, that family member can be paid as he wished. But otherwise, if he has a higher payment that the normal salary of, uh, of that job position has, then it also could be considered as one of the bad practices inside family business. And why do family-owned businesses fail? Well, that 70% in average, and also this could be also considered worldwide, they fail to do that transition from the first generation to the second generation. This according to the 2012 Harvard Business School study. What, What could be some of the reasons? The family feud among members, family problems, the, even the divorce, if the parents or the founders were starting the business as a married couple, and then with time they have a divorce, this could also affect directly to the business that the business could fail in the future. One of the hardest parts of being a family business probably could be the emotions. And as there might be recommendations and plenty of books that say if family to family, the emotions to the family, but separated from business. Well, I don't know if if it's that's really a good recommendations. And if someone do or gives that recommendation, he might be a, not a human because it would be nearly impossible to separate the emotions from a self of a person. And especially if it's a family business, then dealing with the emotions at every time of the day, there could be a mix because the conversations of family business, they don't go only on business times. They don't start at nine and they stop at 5 p.m. Family business conversations, they might start at the breakfast, they might continue at lunch and they could end up in dinner or after dinner. And that's also probably another of the characteristics of family business that since family can meet in if they're living together or they, if they are having a party, a family party or have an event, they can keep up the discussions even in the, in the events that they might have or they can discuss new ideas. Or So emotions are highly involved and they are nearly impossible to be separated, especially in family business. And also if the family is ill-equipped, to handle complex business issues. So this is mainly meant if their family is not really able to succeed in any other issue that might come. So what can be done to reduce this percentage? And 
this needs and it requires that involvement and that will of the second generation. So otherwise, if the second generation doesn't have the will or the desire to keep up what the first generation have done, then it will be nearly impossible there to keep up what the what it has been built. One of the main challenges for the second generation, and of course, it's not only the ideas that might be a uh, idea conflicts between the two generations, but applying those ideas and succeeding is the challenge that they will have to succeed in order to keep up. But as mentioned, if the, the second generation must want to do this change, must want to accept the challenge that it's coming, otherwise dealing with emotions or family feuds or not having the capacity to solve any problem that the future might come. Uh, it doesn't matter if the second ge generation doesn't have that will. So this is the first part or one of the key parts so that the second generation wants to follow and to keep up what the first generation has built. What another recommendation can be done to the second generation is to focus on the innovation and creativity because it's usual that the second generations have a higher levels of growth and that they can do from the first generation, they can do better for the business itself, but it they will require a lot of innovation and creativity to find the solutions and to find the ways that they can further succeed on their own projects and also on the family business projects. If you want to read more about family business, you can visit my website at barrasacarlos.com. I will leave some links down in the descriptions that are focused on the family business areas. And if you have some questions and comments, don't hesitate to write down. Thanks for watching.